All right, one thing's for sure with this Bruins offseason, Peter Shirelli has the big balls to make the big trades and take the risk that you need to fucking make. Now, the Bruins have a good fucking core and a good roster, but, you know, I think it's goddamn important that we make moves and switch up the chemistry of the team so it doesn't get stale. Because that's kind of what happened the year after they won the Cup. And they kind of had some letdown. It just was a, you know, the season didn't have a lot of fucking spunk in it, if you know what I mean. They kind of just seemed like they were skating through games, you know, relying on their ta talent to take them through instead of having energy. And they got kicked out in the first round as a fucking result. So we bring in Jerome McGinley this time for real. And, you know, I hated him at the time. If you saw my video when that happened, that's the first video I ever made. I was fucking pissed off. But I see what he's thinking. All right, he's nearing the end of his career, and he's cup chasing. All right, he thought Pittsburgh was the best team. And for any fucking Bruins fans want to say, I knew we were going to sweep Pittsburgh. Those guys suck. They're, they suck, and I fucking hate them, but no one knew that was going to happen. All right, they had the more talented roster. At the time, if you remember... They were on like a historic winning streak. You know, they won like, I don't, I don't remember how many games. They won a shitload of games in a row. They took points out of a shitload of games. So, you know, he's cup chasing. He doesn't give a damn about going to Boston. All right, he doesn't care about the lobster or the fucking clam chowder or any of that shit. He just wants the best roster and he wants to fucking win. And this time he chose Boston. And I like it because he fits this fucking team. And he's fit this team for a long time. He's not one to, you know, just be all goal scoring. He's he's going to fucking hit. He's a bigger guy on the wing and he fills in nicely for Nathan Horton. I got pretty I got all the confidence that Ginola will make things happen on this team. Now, Nathan Horton. He got 7 years in Columbus. I wouldn't want to do that deal if I was the Bruins, but the fact that they didn't get the option to even do that deal is fucking strange. Like Horton talk, you know, in his press conference talking about, I always dreamed of playing in Columbus. This is my number one choice. What the fuck is wrong with you, Horton? Do you remember what it was like in Florida when no one gives a fuck? All right, Columbus isn't as bad as Florida, but no one gives a fuck. All right. You just want to be in a small town? Like, retire in fucking five years and go live in goddamn Nebraska or some shit for all I care. I don't understand how you can fucking get a taste of winning and then you want to go to Columbus for seven years. Which is a fucking dumb contract for them because, you know, as good as Horton is, as good as he is in the playoffs, he's he gets concussions all the time. You know, his shoulder popped out in the playoffs there. It always seems like he misses games in the playoffs and, you know, it may not be his fault every time. It's not because he's soft or anything, but he's just one of those guys that gets nicked up all the fucking time. Now, the fuck else? Oh, yeah, Sagan got traded. All right. I'm a supporter of Sagan. You know, everyone with fucking eyeballs knows he's going to be a good player in this league. But I guess it just wasn't working here. And Pete Chiarelli, you know, you're fucking on the line here, Pete, if this fucks up. Is this, if this guy turns into Patrick Kane, it's your fucking fault. But the fact that you had the big old stones to do it, you know, is a good sign for this team. Because we don't want to get stale. Now, I don't know much about Louis Erickson, you know. Obviously, he's good, or, you know, I don't watch fucking Stars Hockey, so eh, you don't know who he is. Eh. I've heard he's good, so I, apparently he's more of a two-way player, about 30 goals a year, so we'll take it. These prospects, maybe someone will turn into another player, and, you know, it might, it's probably a good trade for the short term. You know, he's probably as good as Sagan now, if not a little bit better. In the long term, you know, five years from now, I... Pretty sure Sagan will be a better player unless he goes on a fucking coke binge and, you know, drinks himself out of the league. Which I don't give a fuck about anymore because he's not on the Bruins, so fuck it. Alright, so, so I pretty I like what we've done in the offseason. Alright, we haven't been able to get the big players like Clarkson or whatever, but, you know, who wants to give seven million or seven years on the term for those guys? Fuck that. We don't need to get caught with these stupid contracts. Let's get a Ginlo. It's a one-year deal. It's good. He's hungry as fuck for a cup. You know, we ruined those chances last year for him. He's hungry as fuck. He'll play hard. You got no worries about that. And Louis Erickson, he's been stuck on Dallas on that fucking awful team for a while. 
And, you know, hopefully he comes in here and does some damage. So offseason, not great, not bad. But the good thing about it is Pete Shirelli has shown that he's willing to make these fucking moves. So we got a long ways till the season starts. But fuck it. Good job so far.